Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Glory to his third day resurrection. We adore his third day resurrection. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tomb. Be soul in life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs. Be soul in life. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Sit down a minute for a couple brief announcements. It is a joy to see you all here today to celebrate this incomprehensible feast of feasts that changes all of reality for us, hopefully, but really changes reality for the whole world. But whether or not it changes our own personal reality, you know, that is still up to us because we still have a choice of whether or not to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the one who is anointed to come to save the world. And we have a choice to believe if he's the son of God. And we have a choice to believe if he went to the cross and died and was buried and rose from the dead. And we have a choice whether or not we want to follow him. But here is the news. The reality of your response to Jesus Christ is not the reality of who Jesus Christ is. It's not contingent on that. He is who he is. He is the existing one. He is the God. And that is just the way it is. That is just a fact. And I say, well, Father, the rest of the world, you know, a lot of the world doesn't see it that way. Well, why, how can that be? If this is real, how can that be? Now you have to think about other things, you know, in life that you know to be true, that you know to be real, that other people don't follow, right? You know that it is good, for example, to take care of your health. Well, not everyone takes care of their health. Does that mean, oh, it's not good to take care of your health? It doesn't matter. To take care of your personal grooming, you know, to get up in the morning and brush your teeth and wash yourself and get dressed, you know, to do all of the things that we normally do that we take for granted and we think, well, most people do these, but then we say, well, not everybody does it. And there are some things that very few people do. And one of those things is that there are very few people percentage wise in the world that have come to understand who Jesus Christ is. Now, at the same time, there are a lot of people who have come to understand who Jesus Christ is, that he is the God, that he is the son of God, that he died and rose from the dead to conquer death and to conquer sin. But the real deal is whether or not in your heart, whether or not you're willing to accept that. You see, because it's not so easy to accept that. It's not just, oh, well, here's a free ticket. So when you die, you know, you'll go to heaven. It's not so easy as saying, well, here is something that you accept and now your life is gonna be full and good and great. And you're not going to have any problems anymore. That's not the way it works at all. The way it works is we submit ourselves before God because we understand that God is the one who created us and that God knows who we are actually supposed to be. Too many times we think we know who we're supposed to be. Well, we'll figure it out. I am this, I'm defined by my profession. I'm defined by who my friends are. I'm defined by who my family is. I'm defined by how much money I have or don't have. All these other things. And we put our trust in those things as if those things are going to deliver us. Those things are going to be eternal. And the truth is those things are all so temporary. So temporary. So the reality that Jesus is risen from the dead, that we are proclaiming, you know, from this day for the next 40 days, actually we are proclaiming all throughout the year in one way or another in the church. We need to be proclaiming in our own lives. We need to come to terms with that because otherwise there's not really a point to come, you know, and well, we hear some 
nice music and we see some craziness with flowers and leaves all over the floor and someone swinging incense like a crazy man. <laughs> that's not what we need. You know, this is not going to get us anywhere. Well, we're going to have some food. That's nice. None of that really matters if we don't understand and grasp in our own hearts that this is our God and this is your God and you have to deal with him one way or the other. You have to deal with him right here and now or deal with him, God willing, if you live another week, two weeks, years, eventually you're going to have to deal with him. So why not deal with him now? Why not accept what he has given you? Why not accept that goodness, that grace, that love, that peace which surpasses all understanding, which is beyond what we could come up with in our own human constructs. God has come up with and delivered. He has delivered his son to, in a sacrificial way for us, in a way that we cannot ever have thought of to save us. And so that is what we are celebrating. 